having confidence in your music. And then there's also that process where you have that confidence in your music, music, but it's still shit. And, uh, and, uh, and like uh, your, your mates, are, this though, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say, but like, yeah, uh, <laughs> but I think like, yeah, there's that, there's that part in your, when you're like start writing music and you think you've made a banger and then all your mates are telling you that it's an absolute banger. And then you go back and listen to it. Like a few years later and you're like, what the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> I had a house party playing out and I'm buzzing about it or happy about it and they're like that's amazing that's unreal I know I never never used to I never put anything anywhere for like years when I first started and then I think I made like one tune and I started sending it to like all these YouTube channels and all that See, looking back, I was like, I cannot believe I sent some of that stuff out. Like, someone's gonna, uh, someone's gonna pull that out of the like of the darkness one day, and <laughs> you're gonna be cringing. Like, I don't know if I, I was going through your singles earlier, um, and you still like not released loads amounts of music as LF System, which is fucking amazing. Um, but I've released some god awful records over the years that i just like wish i did not record release at all. <laughs> like, and then somebody tags you in a record in in it on like instagram and you're like why are you okay. listening, why are you I listening it, to that shit i know i think it's funny because there's probably somebody out there that loves it and it's like and, right, bro, and, it's, yeah. and, and, it, and it's part of your like it's part of your growth and all that so i know you might want to like shy away from it it's one of the things where it's like well, you might not have actually got to the point where you have, you know, put out that record or you, people, and somebody does enjoy it. And totally. you, you enjoyed it at the time. You enjoyed it at the time, so you must have, like, what? Butterfly, I think. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a funny one. Yeah, totally. I, I I don't disagree with that. I still wish I could take a lot of it down. Aye, aye. <laughs> <laughs> well, all that speech, but still wish I could do it. Yeah. <laughs> have, 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 you guys, have you guys had any of that for you, like, now in the, like, the, the three years that you've been going where you're like, oh, I wish I didn't release that one? Or are you, like, straight up happy with everything? There's a, there's a, no, well, not that I've not, not released it, but, like, what we were saying, uh, there's stuff where they were like, oh, we wish I'd done that a bit better. Like, aye. I think you listen back and be like, oh, just, like that could be better. Or, like, yeah. sort of things. Aye, but, aye, but we've not released a whole lot. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. So, um, but like that's that's another thing. We, we find that like we're still learning like a lot yeah. all the time. Or, like even like a, a record you made two weeks ago, you're like, why did I make that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's interesting. Funny. It's it's interesting how it's interesting how your guys' career has kind of done that. But I, what do you think that's? Do you, why why do you think that's happened? Like, because three years to go from where from three years to that to to where you're at now which you're like pretty fucking in demand everybody wants a piece of you which is an amazing must be an amazing feeling um and also releasing really strong records you're not releasing shit if you know what i mean it's not like it doesn't feel like you're release you're going into the studio and trying to write a number one record you're mm-hmm. it feels like and please correct me if i'm wrong but it feels like you're just going in to write records that, that feel just, great just, it's just uh, it's just uh, a lot of it's been happy mistakes to be honest. Uh, yeah, just have just been persistent and then and then uh, make sure like just try to make stuff that the, you already like and then having fun mm-hmm. and then usually like especially the the people want music campaign and stuff like that and even afraid to feel it was never there was never any pressure on it, it was just mm-hmm. it took, it's one of the tunes that took about half an hour you yeah. know what I mean it just it just came like it was just like. It's just something to play in a club. That's why we were yeah. a club. Like what Sean had already done, we just mm. made it a bit heavier and then put them together. And, and then I was just there. There's never been any like uh, pressure, right? pressure of trying to go out there and do something to get to. Obviously, you want to get to this point, but it's never. It's never been like, oh, we need to do like this, and then that's how it went. It's just been half mistakes and uh, luck. Good luck, I suppose. Luck is the think, key, right? I told us. I think that's like the way. I think we've talked about like moving forward as well. That that attitude, like can't really change like obviously right. once, once you start once people expect more and stuff like that i think you, your attitude might want to change to be like we need to produce again we need to produce a big record again mm. but i think the way we do it is that if it happens it happens and if we're just going to make records that we like and we enjoy and we have fun with the studio so if it does happen it happens so i think that's the amazing thing about like the the more of the underground part of the scene though right is that you can have a really big record and not every other record you release has to be big because you're not trying to sell tickets to like mm. stadiums and things like that. It's not like we're playing in clubs and festivals, which although like, yes, you want to be headlining and you want to earn more money because you want to sell more tickets. Like 
the pressure shouldn't be as high or as, as much because we're playing clubs. We're playing club records. Like you're playing techno music. If you're not you're the for chart music. That's like, mm. is that luckily if the stars are aligned in some reason, the dance music and, and the charts and there is, is mm. booming. Yeah. So I was lucky that the time that we'd done it, that, because it was, it was never made to be in the chart. No. Like we never expected it to go in the charts. We wanted to play at the clubs. Yeah. So it's just, I so like we don't have music to do that. It's just kind of underground scenes. Like we make it to go in the clubs and then. And mm. so. And like you say, that's that's like, that's not going to change as well. But it's not like all of a sudden we're going to start writing pop tech because of that. We're still going to try and make like, because we've got a lot of stuff that nobody's heard. Yeah. It's completely different mm. than like synths and underground and, um. That'll come out eventually, but I like these people in it. Aye, but um, I that was that we're never going to keep chasing. We're not going to keep chasing like to be to keep making our number one record. If it happens, it happens. Which is exactly what's happened this time. Yeah, I think it's a really nice like perspective to have on it, and to be in a position where you guys are at, and not necessarily be putting that pressure on yourselves, and not having the external pressure from like labels and and teams going, you need another number one record. And because I think that just takes the whole fun out of it. And especially it's so like, realistically, you've, let's be honest, you've had a year of career with with touring as LF system because of COVID for two years, if you know what I mean. And now it's like it's happening properly. Um, yeah. If you were to go into a situation where they're like, you have to write more and more records, it must be pretty fuck it would be pretty shit to be mm. fair i've got friends that are, that are pretty big in pop and that is literally all they're trying to do just write hit records and i couldn't even imagine the pressure that, that you kind of have to go through to get that it must be a, it must be a, a weird feeling because like you almost must lose the like the life of it of what yeah. to actually do it. it must be like i need to just like manufacture the records rather than enjoy yeah, what i love it so it's um aye. but we that's we've been lucky like Warner have been really good with us they've been mm. They've said from the start that they just wanted to put out music that yeah. we were, you know what I mean? So, um, and like the next record and stuff like that, nothing's changing. It's all so similar that we... I think they're hoping that it, for it. Uh, well, I think they get us a wee bit more... They, get a, yeah, like, <laughs> they want number one records at the end of the day. It's Warner. Uh, so, uh, I... But, but uh, there's been no, like, pressure being like, the next one needs to be a number one. Or, like, and, like, there's been none of that, so it's... Yeah. Uh, and that hopefully we can we've always got stick like that. We just want to make music. So did you guys sign to Warner bef- like as their left system, like pre like were your previous records on Warner as well? Or or how was that that kind of process? I was uh, the first record was Dancing Cliche. Yeah. That we signed to um that was I think it was summer last year. Yeah. Uh, we put out like a people on music thing on SoundCloud, it was mm-hmm. like seventeen tracks. It was just over across five weeks. And uh Dancing Cliche was one of the records in it. It was just on SoundCloud. Yeah. And um, Danny Howard was playing it on Radio One and all that. And uh, one of the approached us and said, Do you want to sign we want to sign this record? Yeah. And um uh, so that was the first one we've done, then the 50 Fuel was the second one we've done with them. Mm. And then we've got another one coming out as well. So uh, a lot of a lot of it was to do with Danny because what was it nine no what was it seven weeks or something? Nine, played, weeks, uh, nine weeks or seven or weeks they played in a row. And then um I did this to uh, I think uh, Anton Powers, you know Anton. Uh, Anton uh, yeah, yeah. Anton, he's he A and R, and he he um approached us, and that's what that's what we started with that first record there. Eh? That's amazing. And right yeah. in the deep end, really. I know. I know. <laughs> but <laughs> I I think that's the best thing about British British culture, right? And and the how lucky we are to have British radio because in any other country, you don't really have that as much, or like mm. like just. The BBC is just an amazing place mm. to have your music heard and also have have it supported because it's not a commercial radio station where they have to make money because of the the music or anything like that or ads. Like they can literally play what they want when they want, and, <clears> and it's amazing. Um, uh, the, uh, the Friday night shows are. I mean, they've always been good, like Pete Tong and all that for all the years, and obviously they've got Sarah and Danny and like uh, Jack girls doing it as well. So it's all like. He started playing that music really early as well, which was uh, mental. So that even before the Warner stuff, they were playing. I think what was the first first one? Yeah, like Andy, like Andy Matt was playing off tunes and stuff like that. Mm, so, so. I uh, like you say, it's like the British radio and stuff like that's been. So it's, uh, it's really good because there's no pressure for them. everybody. Everywhere yeah. as well, always like doesn't matter what like in countries underground artists are always trying to get the music on Radio One. Yeah, mm. it's like it's that bigger like a uh, platform. Mm. It's, it's mad, isn't it? It's mad. Yeah. 
and like it's a worldwide like I don't really know of any other radio stations that people listen to worldwide. I don't think there is. Whereas no. like everyone around the world listens to the essential mix or re listens back to like all of the shows, the, the Friday night shows. It's <laughs> it's definitely a special thing for, for dance music culture, which I, what they can do when they do the Ibiza one as well is just like we do one Ibiza how, can, how many people they attract yeah did you play yeah. Radio 1 Ibiza this year? Uh, we never we were there the same time we were in Ibiza the same time but we never yeah. actually played it no yeah they, it wasn't as big of a thing this year they they kind of like scaled back a little bit but usually like the years are like crazy big and mm -hmm. it's, it's special but um, that's cool so what's it like working with with Warner as of a dance music act. Well, that was the funny thing when we first <clears throat> when they first came like call me like one of like one of like what did the dance stuff? So yeah. It was like is he, uh, maybe he's a bit naive, but he just associate with like big pop records and all that kind of stuff. So um but I they've been really good because I think they they've tried to build out and they've obviously Eliza Rose is obviously with them now. Yeah. It's just quite comfortable one. Um but we've heard some of the other records that are coming out as well that are dance records. So they're they they're obviously building more and more into that, so ah, uh, they've been really good. But like, but it's un like unexpected that for like when we first did it like a year ago, yeah. But, um, like we, they do like it sounded good, and it's obviously and it's going good now. So yeah, that's, that's really taking over. Yeah. It's just like it's like I don't know what it, what it is, but it seems to be just taking over. Like if you think about even like bands and stuff, and like. I, just, I, don't, I don't think it's as popular as what dance music yeah, is. It's just like, it goes through cycles, doesn't yeah. it? Like, it's like right, we're, in the, we're in the right cycle then. Right. One hundred percent. The cycle is dance music now, and it's fucking amazing because it like we lost it in like the mid two thousands. I feel like we lost it a little bit to bands, and then we lost it to like formulaic dance music, mm -hmm. and then I don't know where it's only been quite recent that it's came back. I think yeah. like the the last biggest hit was like Cola um, that came out of dance music, Camel Fat. And then Ewan had his record. And there's, yeah, there's, there's been a few others, but like most recent, I guess it was Ewan and then, and then you boys. I feel like it started creeping in about 2000, maybe what, 14? Was it, what was the MK you like looked right through and like uh, second set? That was yeah. like 2010 time. It was a long time ago that. Right. And the guy, was that 2010? I think it was. Well, 14, I think. So. Was it? Oh, maybe 14, was it? Let me check. I was, we, started we, creeping back we in were, then. We were, we were 18, so that was... Yeah, so that was... Yeah, okay. been a team, so. I, but, but, well, now there's blow up by talking about your unions and I definitely are just... Mm. 2000, I just released 2010. 2010? Yeah. 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 That was yeah. it, like, second city? Was that the second city? They called it in the Say that again. Route 94, the second city. Is that what one was that? That was the Storm Queen MK. Oh, oh yeah, I thought I was talking about the, uh, Oh, right. City. Yes, the second city. And then you got the um, Route 94 as well. That that was yeah. that was a uh, strong era then. Because then you had yeah, right, you had Jack Breach as well at the same time. There was, oh, was a, there was like some really. But then I, it fell off. And then. K K Kaiser as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that, was, that was a really interesting time as well. But it, yeah, like. It's fashionable. It's fashion. It's music's just music's just like clothes fashions. It's like it goes in and out, and like now everyone's wearing nineties gear and listening to disco <laughs> records again, and it's fucking amazing. <laughs> I thought we, we snuck in that disco train. Yeah, 